Hello, each and every one. Welcome to the Ministry of the Huddle and the Bible Says International Ministries. I am Jen Harvey. If this is your first time joining us, I want to welcome each and every person for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because ministry is not ministry without people. So I want you to know how much I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Sunday after Sunday, you're here. And there are other things that are beckoning for your time. And you could give your time to other things, but you have you made a determination and you decide that you're going to be here. So I really appreciate your time because you are valuable and your time is also welcome. This evening, we're going to speak briefly. It is an informal conversation, much of the ones I've had all year. And the topic is reflect, remember, rejoice, and return. Why must I reflect, Jen Harvey? Why must I remember? What is the there to rejoice about and must what must what must I do to return or why must I return? We have to reflect because first, if you don't reflect, you shall not remember. And you must reflect. What am I reflecting on? The year is coming to a close. We just have a few more days. I think today's the 18th. And if I'm not mistaken, the year ends in 12 days or so. And God has been good to you. Does it mean that you always have everything you want? Absolutely not. Did it mean that the entire year, everything went your way? Absolutely not. There are some things that I was expecting and they did not occur. There are some things that I did not expect and they occurred. And so there is much to reflect on. Look at COVID. COVID came. Many have lost loved ones. Many have lost friends. Many have lost families. We have lost associates. Oh, look at so, so many people have lost their jobs, but God has still kept you. So you need to reflect on the goodness of God. You're still in the land of the living. If you're under the sound of my voice, God has been kind to you. He did not give you over to the devices of your enemies. So you need to reflect. What must I remember? You must remember that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died. You must remember that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You must remember that it's not by might nor by power, but it is by the spirit of the living God. You must remember that Jesus Christ paid an awesome price for you. You must remember that the sacrificial Lamb of God, he who was without sin, was made sinner on your behalf and on my behalf. You must remember the God's word that he gave you his word. Not only must you remember it, but you must rejoice over it. So this evening I have called us. I have called us together to reflect. Reflect on what your life would have been without Jesus Christ. If you and I have to go through so much and we feel at times there is despair, we feel at times disturbed, we are distracted, sometimes we feel dismayed, we are doubtful, yet we have the spirit of the living God living on the inside of us. Could you just imagine those who don't have Jesus Christ? Could you just imagine those that don't have the Holy Spirit, what they're going through and how they're called? Open, you hear, oh, suicide is on the rise. Emotional instability. Why must I not rejoice? Because the Bible says he's, those whose minds are stayed on Christ will be kept in perfect peace. God has given you his holy pericope. Jenny has given you the word of God. Joy, the word of God that he watches over. The Bible says that God's word and him are one. It says Sharon shoulder that he elevated is word above his name. So why must I not, Caroline, give God praise? Why must I not rejoice? Why should I not open up my mouth and say no stone is going to stand in my stead? Why must I not remember Lot's wife? The Bible says, remember Lot's wife. 
we can't, we can't, we can't just do whatever we want, just live any which way we want and think we'll get into heaven. We have got to return. Some of us need to return. Some of us need to return. We have got to get back to the cross. We have got to remember the Christ. We have got to get back in the holy writ. We have got to get back on our knees. We must return to the times when we truly feared God. We must return to the times when we prayed. We must return to the times when we read the word of God, when we hid it in our hearts that we might not sin against the most high God. We must return to the time when we feared God. We must return to the time when we honored him and we exalted him. Don't you know that familiarity breeds contempt. We have got too familiar with the Most High God. We must return to that place of reverence. We must return to that place where we believed God. Do you remember I was hearing a preacher saying that we must return to the place where we first met God? And I wanted to say, preacher, no, 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 I don't want to return to that place because I have grown. I don't know about she tell me. I have developed. I don't want to return to that place where I first met God, when I was ignorant, when I was a babe in Christ. But if that is your strongest point, then you must return to it. But many of us have grown and there is still room for more growth. So this evening, I want you to reflect. Reflect, Caroline. God has been good to you. Carol, you know the devastation that COVID took in your family, but God spotted you, and God covered you, and God kept you, Carol. And he said, no, 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 no. My daughter's assignment is not yet finished. Oh, Galaxy S8, you know God has been good to you. Wisdom, might I remind you that God has been good to you. Oh, oh, Sharon Shorter, God has been kind to you. Michael Spicer, you also, you know God has dealt kindly with you. Oh, 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 Chris, God has kept you. And Lillian, what about you? What about you? God has been good to you. So we need to reflect on the goodness of God. Don't let us be like the nine lepers. Don't let us be counted among the ingrates. Let us reflect on the goodness of God. Let us remember that he has been kind, that he didn't have to, but he chose to be kind. He made a sovereign decision to be kind to us, and we have reasons to rejoice. Rejoice that Jesus Christ has paid our sin debt in full. Rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Rejoice that we are no bastard. Rejoice that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice because we are in the palm of his hands and no one or anything can pluck us out. Rejoice because his thoughts towards us are peace and not evil to give us hope and a marvelous future. Rejoice because he watches over us jealousy, jealously. Rejoice because he he has edged us about. Rejoice because we have much to rejoice about this evening. This evening, we have 12 more days, 12 more days or 13 more days before the year end. I don't want you to make a New Year's resolution. They don't last. This is why I've called you to reflect. This is why I've called you to remember. This is why I've called you to rejoice and to return. Return to your old ways. If your old ways are better than the ways you have now, because many of us as a babe in Christ, we read the word more than we do now. Many of us as a baby in Christ, we prayed more than we are now. You see, we have, we have become grown and our love for God has waxed cold, but God is calling us. He's calling us to a new place. He's calling us to return. We must not be like Israel. Israel went a whoring after other gods. Israel forgot the goodness of their God, but we must be like David. We must ponder, we must think, we must reflect and we must return. We must return to our God. I'm calling and asking you as my brothers and as my sisters, we're living in the evil days. The time is drawing nigh and 
people say I sound like a Isaiah and I sound like a Jeremiah, but I know what God has told me. It is just yet a while and he's going to step foot in America. I can't stop saying this because I know it's going to happen, Sharon King. If I be a servant of the living God, you've got to watch God. Read the holy pericope. Look at his patterns. Look at his principles. Look at his practices. He's coming down to judge America. And when he does, the righteous gets caught in his holy indignation. This is why it is important. It is important for us as Christians to intercede for this nation, to intercede for this country, because this is the land in which we live, and it is a wicked and evil nation. Oh, make no bones about it. It is a wicked and evil nation. And the church is fast asleep. We are playing politics. We are playing Republicans. We are playing Democrats. And God has left us to be Christians. Watchmen. Gatekeepers. Not to take sides, but to do the bidding of Jesus Christ. Sharon, will you reflect tonight? Will you remember the goodness of God? Get a piece of pe a paper, get a pen and write it down. I'm telling you this, I can share my testimony with you. I'm asking you guys to pray for me. I'm going through, but I got joy. Who told you you can't go through and have joy at the same time? I'm going through, but I got praise in my mouth because when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he has done for me, uh, my soul, my soul, my soul, Christ, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Uh, the Bible lets us do not be so, take so much care. Be, do not uh, be overly uh, consider or be conscious or or just be pressed down about him who can kill the flesh and do no more. You must consider he who after he kills can cast into hell and you guys are saved and you're not going to hell. Why should not we, we rejoice? You have a roof over your head. You have food on your table. God has left you the Holy Spirit. The he who will lead and guide you into all truth. You have God living on the inside of you. Why should you not rejoice? Why should you not give him praise? Oh God, oh God, oh God, we need to repent tonight. Meet some of us and all we have are complaints. If you go to other parts of the world, we are still Christians here and people living in America, we are still counted among the richest in the world. People living in other parts of the world that are making $20 a month. Some of you guys make $20 in 30 minutes. Some of you make $20 an hour. Some of you make $20 in 15 minutes. Some of you make $20 in two minutes. And we won't give God thanks. And we won't give God praise. And we go out and we come in and we weren't shot down by a stray bullet and we can go to church and we can openly praise God. We still have the holy writ that we can open it and we can still declare thus saith the word of the living God. I know many churches don't say homosexuality is wrong, but we can still say it in this land. We still got time. I know many of us don't say lesbianism is wrong, but we can still say it in this nation. I know we are not talking about adultery and fornication, but we can still cry against it in this nation. I know we are not opening our mouth and saying our politicians God need to remove some of them like he did Ahab. He need to cut some of them down like he did Zanakareba. He need to he need to reprove some of them like he did Nebuchadnezzar. He need to just remove some of them. But we are not saying it. We are not saying it because we no longer are on the side of God. Chris, I'm here to tell you, even if the politician that you love, if his policies are anti-God, speak against him. Speak against her. We are Christians. 
And God has called us to defend and hold up the word, not to take sides. God has called us to cry against sin. God has called us to love the sinner, but you can't love and not correct. I don't know why I'm going this way, but mothers and grandmothers, if you love your children, you better correct them. How can you say you love someone and you don't correct them? How? When you know that you're, you're leading their souls down a path of absolute and utter destruction if they're not corrected. Correct them. Let them not listen. But then you don't have to go because you won't have to give God a question, an answer. Why didn't you chasten your sons? Why didn't you chasten your daughters? Why didn't you correct your nieces and your nephews? Why didn't you correct your grandchildren? Why didn't you correct your cousins? We have to be on the side of the most high God. So this evening, this evening, I am just urging you, don't allow the rest of the year the next two weeks that we have to cause you just to continue and bring your old habits and your old ways into 2023. What is it that you want to be changed in your life for 2023? Reflect on it, write it down. Reflect not only on the goodness of God, but also on your shortcomings, because it was it's the goodness of the Lord while we are not consumed. But still, you ought to reflect for you to see your shortcomings and your challenges so you can work at them. I'm going to say this, and I know some Christians are not going to like this, but God has raised me up for such a time as this to declare truth. We Christians, we are always looking for God in the supernatural and we are not looking for him in the mundane, the everyday. Don't you know that God works more in the everyday than you're going to get a supernatural turnaround? He works every day in your health when you make healthy choices. He works every day in your finances when you make good financial decisions. He works every day in the mundane. Why don't we develop ourselves? Why is it that we are not grooming ourselves? Why is it that we are looking for God out there when he's right here with us in the every day? Why? Why is it that we're looking for God to come down and eradicate our diabetes, eradicate our high blood pressure, eradicate our cancers? And I'm not saying he can't. Do not misunderstand me. Well, why don't we just take care of our health? Why is it that we are asking God to open up the skies and fall and cause money to come down when what he has blessed us with financially, we are not good stewards? Why don't we take care of our finances? Why don't we do the everyday things that we can do? And that which we can't, we just leave it to God in prayer, just praying for the Holy Spirit to, to help us. But the things that we can do, why are we not working on them to improve them, Joy? Christians, I don't know, my heart is so burdened for the church. You see something happening and it's always the devil. We are always blaming the devil and we're not reflecting on what we did or what we failed to have done that has gotten us to this point. We are not remembering that if we continue to do the same thing that we have always done, we're going to yield the same outcomes. And we continue to complain more than we rejoice. We have more to rejoice for. Can you just imagine if God were to show us all that he has safeguarded us from, all that he has delivered us from, even with that goodness, we'd be overwhelmed. But look at what that which we don't know and leave that aside and look at that which we know that God has delivered us from, that he safeguards us from. People leave their homes and don't return. They're hit by a car, hit by a stray bullet. 
they meet in accidents. Uh, people are, are just gone down and cut down and suicide and depression. And we don't want to rejoice. And we don't want to tell God, thank you. If you and I are waiting for everything to be right before we give God praise, glory, and honor, we will never give him praise, glory, and honor because we live in a fallen world and things are always going to go south. We have to get to the place. I pray, Sharon, I pray, Lillian and Chris and Carol and Caroline and Sharon and Joy and Jenny and Michael and Samsung and Carlotta and those on the prayer line and Pinky and Wisdom. I'm praying, I'm praying that your 2023 is going to be an amazing year. I'm praying that some of the devils and the demons and the trouble you see, you will not see in 2023, Patricia. I'm praying, Deborah, that God is going to show up and show forth for you, Maria. Morton, that you'll have a 2023 like you've never had. But we have got to do some work. We have got to do some reflecting. We have got to remember. We must rejoice. And we have got to return, 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 return. The Lord is looking for us to come back to him. The Lord is looking for us to make up our minds. The Lord is looking for a people who are trustworthy, a people whom he can make his boasting. The Lord is looking for a people, a people with thanksgiving, a heart of thanksgiving and praise because they remembered the price that was paid for them. They remembered Calvary's cross. They remember that he's the way maker. They remember that he snatched them out of the kingdom of darkness and translated them in the kingdom of his dear son. They remember, they remember, they remember. Will we not remember the goodness of God because we have reflected? Will we not rejoice because we have remembered the goodness of God? And will we not return because he has called us to return? So tonight I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I'm going to pray that for the next two weeks that God will continue to keep you. I'm going to pray and ask God, God, we have two more weeks. It's not over until you say it's over. There are some things, God, that we have been looking for according to your purpose, according to your plans. We are asking you that to bring them to pass in the name of Jesus. We are asking the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to visit you, to speak to you in a still small voice, to cause you to hear and grant you the grace to say, yes, not my will, but thy will be done. I'm going to ask God to edge you about. I'm going to ask God to prosper the works of your hands. I'm going to ask God to bring you out. I'm going to ask God to touch your mind. I'm going to ask God to give you clarity of thoughts. I'm going to ask God to season your tongue and give you the tongue of the learned. I'm going to ask God to set you on fire, make you a holy ghost and a righteousness preacher teacher, disciple. I'm going to ask God to fill you with his love, the love, that, that agape love. I'm going to ask God to empower you, to add value to humanity. Oh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, Lord God, the Bible says we are two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of us. We are more than two or three that are gathered. So I welcome you and thank you, Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, you said if we freely confess our sins, you said you're righteous and just. Not only will you forgive our sins, but you will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, each and every person under the sound of my voice, including myself, Lord God, we have not always gotten it right, Lord God. We have missed the mark, oh, Father, Lord God. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, we're asking you to wash us, Lord God. We're asking you to cleanse us, Lord God. We're asking you, oh, Father, Lord God, to create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. We're asking you, oh, Father, Lord God, to circle 
circumcise our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We're asking you to give us a heart like Jesus, one that's filled with love, light, and life. Oh, Father, I saturate each and every person under the sound of my voice. I immerse them in the blood of Jesus. I soak them in the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord God, tonight I'm praying, oh God, we have two more weeks before the year ends. I'm asking you to keep us in all our ways, oh God. I'm asking you to edge us about in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to build a wall of fire around us. I'm asking you to make our lives too hot for the enemy to touch. Oh, Father, Lord God, hide us in the cleft of your bosom where we cannot be reached. Oh, Father, Lord God, we're asking you to fight for us. Show up as Jehovah Shabbat, the military might, the mighty man of war, he who have never lost a battle. Oh, Father, Lord God, I'm praying tonight in the mighty name of Jesus for a visitation, oh God. Visit your people in the mighty name of Jesus. There are two more weeks before the year, oh God. Bows out in the name of Jesus. And many of us, oh Father, Lord God, we still are, have our eyes upon you. There are still promises you made, oh Father. God to us. Uh, and Father, Lord God, uh, the Bible says that your hands are not short uh, and that you cannot save uh, and your ears are not heavy, that you cannot hear. But it is our iniquities uh, that have separated us from you uh, that will cause you not to hear our prayer. But Father, Lord God, we have already prayed for forgiveness. Uh, so we're asking you to do it, Lord God, uh, for you're the God who transcends time. Uh, Father, you live and you exist outside of time. Uh, Father, what is two weeks to you in the name name of Jesus. We're asking you to touch us, oh God, in two weeks. We're asking you, oh God, to bring healing to our minds, bodies, souls, and spirit in the next two weeks. We're asking you to touch our finances, oh Father God. We're asking you, oh Father Lord God, to show us, show us what needs to be done and how to do it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're asking you, oh God, for wisdom, for you said wisdom is the principal thing. Oh Father Lord God, for the next two weeks, weeks, oh God. Embellish your people with wisdom, Lord God. I pray, oh Father God, that you will cause unparalleled and unprecedented favor to rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm asking you to rebuke the devourer on their behalf. I'm asking you to edge them about in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, Lord God, I'm asking you to load them down with blessings, oh God. Oppress them down with blessings. Blessings that are pressed down. Shame taken together and running over, cause men to give into their bosoms in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm asking you to save, Lord God, for you're the God who is mighty to save. You're the God who is strong to deliver. I'm asking you in the mighty name of Jesus, take captivity captive out of their life, oh God. I'm asking you to deliver them on every side in the name of Jesus. Deliver them from the strong man of alcohol. Deliver them from sexual promiscuity. Deliver them from drug addiction. Deliver them from depression in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Deliver them from a lying spirit, oh God. Deliver them from fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord God. Deliver them. Deliver them from that which they know they ought to be delivered from. Deliver them from that which they are unaware. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray today, O oh God, for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I pray, O oh Father, Lord God, that you will make the crooked path straight for them, Lord God, that you will go before them as a source of light. You will stand behind them as a rear guard. You will get ready your bow, get ready your arrow, and you will fight for them in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I decree and I declare, Lord God, uh, that no weapon from the north, uh, no weapon from the east, uh, no weapon from the west, uh, no weapon that is formed and fashioned against them will prosper. And every tongue that's risen against them in judgment, uh, I rise up and I condemn it in the name of Jesus. Uh, I push back the enemy's plans, oh God, against them. I stand between them, hell, death, and the grave. Uh, Father, they shall live uh, and they shall not die in untimely death. Uh, 
they will live to declare the works of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, have mercy. Oh, God. I cry for mercy, Lord God. I cry for mercy, Lord God. I cry for mercy tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have mercy upon your people, Lord God. Have mercy, Lord God. I'm asking you to intervene. Oh, Father, Lord God, this is a 911 call. Father, they know, oh God, they know, we know we have need for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, come quickly, Lord God. Oh, send help from the sanctuary, Lord God. Send help from Mount Zion in the name of Jesus. Send help from your holy hill, Lord God. Laugh at the devices of the enemy against us in the mighty name of Jesus. And give your people an open heaven under, under which to live. Father, Lord God, every arrow that is fired against the church, every arrow that is fired against your people, I command it to backfire with fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father, Lord God. Come quickly, Lord God. We have no other God, oh God, beside thee. Whom shall we go to and where shall we run? But we will look upon to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, Lord God, the Bible says, while praying, you have answered us. And because the spirit of the living God has helped us to pray the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous, we know, oh Father God, that you have answered. Oh Father, may the blessing you have released. May the blessings you have released for each and every person under the sound of my voice. May the blessings search for them. May the blessings locate them. May the blessings overtake them. May the blessings overwhelm them. May the blessings rest, rule, and abide permanently in their lives. In Jesus' name I have prayed and let the church of the living risen King say a resounding amen. And it's good to see some of my friends that I haven't seen in a while. Oh, Pinky, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome all of you, all of you, Marie, Deborah, Jenny, Carol, Patricia, Carlotta, Zeb, Galaxy, Aid, Wisdom, Morton. I wish I knew everybody's name to call Michael Spicer, Sharon Shorter, just Joy, Samsung, welcome. Everybody on the prayer line, everybody who has a number, but I can't recognize you because there, there is no name. I just want to thank you. I want you to be encouraged that if you are blood bought and blood washed, I pray for you. I get up in the morning. Morning, and I tarry before the risen living king for the church. I ask God to protect you, to provide for you. I ask God to help you. I also ask him to chasten you because he chastened those whom he loves. I ask him to fill you with his spirit. I ask him to baptize you with fire. I ask him to make himself and his plans known unto you. I ask him to heal you. I ask him to edge you about. I ask him to lift you up. Oh, I pray for the church. I pray for the church and I'm going through because God has given me that assignment. Oh, when you, the church is a large body and for you to get up every day and pray for the church, the enemies come upon me like a flood. I don't know what she's telling me, but my Bible lets me know that when the enemy comes in upon me like a flood, the spirit of the living God, he raises a standard and sends him to flight. Trust in the Lord with all your might, my brothers and sisters, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall, not he might, he shall direct your path. I want you to know that I love you and that I'm reminding you of our overnight prayers. You have got to come. I got a call on Friday. I was so encouraged. They said, Jen, the prophet purchased this ticket. His ticket has been purchased and that he's on his way. Let me tell you about our two speakers, Bishop Gerald Seabrooks, dubbed the preacher's preacher. He's dubbed the theologian of the city. You've got to come and hear this man exegete scriptures. And this prophet that is coming, I went to, my friend invited me to her church. And I told you one testimony that I was talking to the Lord in my heart and the Lord was telling me things. And this man called me out after my prayer was done. And he was telling me some of the things that God and I had a conversation about. I was 
overwhelmed because only God knows the heart. It could have only been the spirit of the living God who told this man the conversation that I was having with God and that God was having with me. And then he turned around. Listen, folks, why you should be there. He said, I'm not going to say it. And then he says, I will. He looked at the pastor. He says, you have some leadership members here who are planning a coup against you. Two of the women in the praise and worship team fell like this. You talk about God doesn't have prophets in the land. He called them out. God has prophets in the land. God has prophets in the land. One of my leadership member, Beverly, if she was on the line, he called her address. He said, who lives at so-and-so? This man lives in Florida. He said, who lives at so-and-so? He started telling her about her son. He called out Reverend Brown. He said, don't worry, your son will take care of you. Reverend Brown only has one child. He's a son. Then he looked at her. He said, don't worry about your granddaughter. The son only has one child. He's a daughter. When I tell you that this man doesn't ask you questions, he's going to call it out. You've got to call. And then in the morning, the praise and worship team anointed. And in the morning, Sharon, when I send you home with your liver, your cook up sawfish, your callaloo, your escovitch fish, your fried bakes, or your plantain, your cornmeal porridge if you're from the Caribbean, or your oatmeal if you're American, or you are going to go home with a bag filled with goodies. You're going to eat and you're going to know that you have laid a solid foundation for 2023. For if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? I have people calling me on the radio just saying, I'm coming. And they're like, this is free. We can't believe this is free. But you know what? And I'm not saying other ministries don't have to charge, but God has a season in which he allows you to do certain things. This is the season where freely God has given me and freely I shall give to God's people. I love people. I love God's people. I want to see us thrive. I'm encouraging you to come out. I'm expecting all of you to be there. I will also be there. And I will speak briefly. We have a, a team of intercessors. We're going to be praying for families, for health, for finances, for the nation. And as you know, your truly is going to lift up the church. That is my assignment. Won't you come out and be a blessing? It is free, absolutely free of charge. Come and hear a word from God for your 2023. Come and be prayed for being the, the company of like-minded people. Come and let the prophet speak into your life. Come, please. I urge you to come. This is Jen Harvey of the Huddle and the Bible says International Ministries. Until we meet again, may the peace, presence, power, purpose, provision, protection, promises, and providence of God rest and abide with you permanently is my prayers. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive. There's one other thing that I want to say. Christmas falls on a Sunday. We're not going to meet. I want you to be with your family. Enjoy your meal and sit around with families and friends. So Sunday evening, Christmas, December 25th, we will not be meeting. Okay? Love you. Bye-bye.